Hey, I'm Daniel, and you're watching an episode of my podcast, The Film Craziest Show. On this episode, I was joined by Kate Green, the showrunner and director of the web series Narco Leap. And today, we specifically talked about the second season of Narco Leap. The series is about a college student named Kelsey who learns she can leap into other people's bodies during bouts of narcolepsy. If you're in Canada, an episode of the web series will be playing tonight as part of the Blood in the Snow Film Festival, playing on Super Channel as part of the short pro, the short film program uh, Web Bites, which is about 90 minutes of, of, of short horror and short sci-fi. And you can also stream the first and second season of the show on uh, the streaming service Highball.tv. And you can also follow the show on Instagram or Twitter at NarcoLeap. So here's Kate Green to introduce the show. Hey everyone, I'm Kate Green and I'm the creator and director of the web series Narcoleap and you're watching the film Craziest Show. Cool, thanks Kate. It's great to, to have you on the show and talk, be talking about the second season of Narcoleap. Yes, we finally made it. <laughs> there was a few up and down moments, but we did it. <laughs> now, I, I noticed that the, yeah, I noticed the first season came out in 2018 and then yeah. the second season's coming out. 20 late 2020 or is, has it been released yet it, it did it came out december of 2020 so we just squeaked it into 2020 the last okay. second <laughs> so what, what's that journey been like the the couple years between seasons yeah um well you know funding and, and closing financing was a big part of uh the delay uh we <clears throat> we got cmf but uh we were unsuccessful in some of our other applications but like me, I'm, I'm like a bit of a dog with a bone. I don't give up and uh, kept going and <laughs> kept applying. And um, eventually we, we closed financing and I thought, okay, we have enough to do four episodes, uh, 15 minute episodes. I'm just moving forward. I'm setting a date and I'm just going to, we're going to do it. And um, <clears throat> we did that. And then uh, COVID hit. <laughs> so that kind of put us back a little bit again. And, uh, you know, there was the lockdown and then eventually as the summer went along, we, I kept talking with Amber Orchard, my co-producer and uh, production manager. We thought, okay, we know things are going to open up again in, in August. And there was, there was going to be like this little sweet spot where crew, like the big shows wouldn't be back here in Vancouver yet. So I knew that I'd be able to find crew. People hadn't been working for, you know, four months by that point. Um, and I, you know, it's really tough to find crew in Vancouver, um, especially, you know, if you're if you're shooting a web series for 12 days or 15 days or what have you, um, it's hard to entice people to to come and do that when you know you've got shows that are offering six month contracts. So, um, but there was this little tiny sweet spot of like two weeks in August, and again, just kind of set a date and went forward and said, okay, this is what's happening. And it all fell into place. Like I, I feel like if I'd gone to Vegas and just, you know, played the <laughs> played the craps, I would have uh, I would have won big. And uh, yeah, we, we got it done. Uh, fifteen days or no, yeah, f fifteen days. Uh, or am I just a, no twelve days? <laughs> Maybe fifteen days. I was like wishful thinking. <laughs> um, but we we got it shot and. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really proud and very happy with how it's all turned out. Now, so it was kind of like so six episodes, 15, 12 days. Oh, right. Yeah. So that was the other thing. So we still we still thought we were only going to be doing four episodes. Uh, but I had applied also again for the Bell uh, Fund the second time okay. around. And we got it. And it was like last minute for us. Um, we were probably about two or two weeks out from shooting. And we quickly wrote two more scripts and quickly, you know, got locations and casting and all of that. And it was a, it was definitely a high intensity scramble, but we, we did it. Okay. So we got six episodes. Okay. Now, which scripts were those like episode five and six, I suppose? No, actually that's a, it's a, it's a great question. We, it was actually episode one and two. So okay. we had, we had written it as though like two, three, four, five, six was going to be <clears throat> the series. Okay. And, uh, and then, so we just kind of backed up the story a bit more. Now for someone like me, who's only seen the second season, um, is there anything from the, the first season that's like very important to know? Um, I would say that, 
I mean, it, it lays the groundwork uh, for kind of uh, Kelsey's abilities and you know how it how it all works. But season one is really about her journey and discovering that she's got this special ability and her realize that she really she's alone in season one. She thinks she's the only one that can do this. So season two is kind of like there's a lot of big reveals and there's a lot of plot twists with characters. Um, and you start to really get to see some of the backstories of some of the characters as well in season two. Can you talk a bit about what inspired this web series? Yeah. Um, what inspired? Well, I mean, I always, I, I love sci-fi. I've always been attracted to kind of the quirky and the odd ways of, you know, characters and storytelling. Um, for me, I really wanted to do something that you know, had had a female lead that was kind of coming into her own and trying to discover and figure out the world around her and, and her, you know, love and life and relationships, as most 20 year olds are <laughs> at that point in their life. Um, and so I had, uh, I'd been pitched an idea. Uh, I'd been working with a, a young writer, uh, Donald Auger, and he pitched me an idea because I said, look, I want to do a sci fi. I want to work with Kelsey. Chelsea, ah. <laughs> that happens a few times. That's kind of confusing, anyway. So it's yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, Chelsea Reese, and uh, I really want to have a story where you know she's got a, an arc where um, she really kind of comes into her own and starts to realize kind of her inner superpowers. And he came back and he pitched me an idea uh, about a young girl, a very young girl, uh, like eleven years old, uh, trapped in a military facility, uh, had special powers and uh her name was subject 46 and there was there was some t like a bit of narcolepsy was involved with all of that and and i was like okay there's something really interesting here it's a bit it was a bit you know there was a lot of concepts it was a bit jumbled but i'm like okay there's something really interesting here like let's start developing this together and uh we did and about a month into it stranger things came out which was about a young girl trapped in a military facility and her name was 11. <laughs> so I was gonna say like okay this yeah. is very it's strange familiar. <laughs> yeah so you know you know it's like oh you have those moments when you're you see things that you're creating and you see it on screen already and um it's really disheartening but you also at that point you know that you're kind of in the zeitgeist like obviously you're you're on to something and um, at that time, I had been accepted into the Women in Directors Chair program and uh, talked to Donald and said, look, I, I really think there's still something here. I mean, we're going to have to kind of break it down and kind of back to the drawing board and, you know, build it back up again. Um, and so, you know, he, he we shook hands and I said, OK, I'm, I'm off and I'm going to go do that. And uh, he he uh, agreed to that. And so I went into that program, redeveloped the whole concept and came out at the end with uh, Narcleap as it is now. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And I love how that all comes together. Now, when like when you were thinking about like, like how you said like some of the ideas were like jumbled, there was like a bit busy, like yeah. is there, um, is it much more important for a web series, which is only like usually 15 minute episodes? Is it much like, can you talk about the importance of like having to like streamline the action and kind of like focus in? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is something that, you know, a lot of people that have pitched me other ideas uh, since Narcolib, um, you know, they've got these worlds and they've created all these characters and ideas and, and multi it's very convoluted sometimes and very complex, which is great. But with web series, you, it's, you can't um, put enough um, importance on the process of development you have to really spend that time to really refine and hone your idea and every episode has to be tight every episode has to has that have that very clear you know beginning middle end and also kind of the 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 hook at the end of every episode to, to kind of get you into the next one so that but that takes time and that that takes a lot of work to really like you know distill all of that uh, all the ideas down to really tight fun interesting you know whatever you want to call it episodes i love it like every episode like had a little cliffhanger even the 
the last last one in this series. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I this season I started I was working with John Cooksey, who uh, he has come on board as our showrunner for the because we're developing it as a TV series called Trippers. Okay. And um, so he's come on board for that. And so season two was really an opportunity to kind of lay the groundwork for some of the storylines and some of the things that will happen in the television show as well. So okay. ha my hat's off to John Cooksey. <laughs> Why the name change? Um, we felt that um, the story had evolved. And of course, in season two of the web series, Kelsey realizes that she's not alone and that there sure. is this group of uh, young adults that have her same ability, but they use that ability for somewhat nefarious reasons. And we felt like that was really the concentration of the story and where the story was okay. evolving. And so, um, yeah, it was, you know, it's that YA drama or, you know, sci-fi that it's about the group experience, the collective experience. Now, is the TV series, is that going to be following where this season leaves off or is it is that going to be like retelling a bit of uh, Kelsey's story? Uh, the pilot episode retells uh, Kelsey's story a little bit. Um, basically the, the whole the whole web series uh, season one it gets condensed into about like the first act of the pilot and then uh, from there the story really goes on to tell her, her story and Louise's story and it's like their relationship between okay. the two of them and the trippers. Okay, that's that, that's really cool. Nice. Um, I, obviously, <laughs> my brain stopped working there for a second. Uh, obviously, the biggest comp for this would probably be Quantum Leap. So I'm just I'm just wondering, like, when in the the pitching meeting, like, did that yeah. help sell it, or was that kind of like they're like, ah, is this Quantum Leap kind of thing? Yeah, it depended. I mean, not to be cheeky, but it did depend on who I was pitching to. Okay. If they were of a certain age, I would reference Quantum Leap. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> um, but it, I mean, it really is. It's like, it, it is a, it's a modern day female driven Quantum Leap in a way. So, yeah. <laughs> and then probably someone my age, you'd be like, oh, have you seen Jumper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love these concepts either way though. So it's, that's, well it's down. fun it's fun because you you start to ask people like who would you leap into like if you if you start to think about it and that's kind of that was the one fun thing about pitching it too is like you could ask these executives or whoever it's like well who would you leap into if you could and like why and you know and that would spark like a huge conversation so oh, okay <laughs> now who would you leap into <laughs> <laughs> um i've it's it's changed you know as the years and the um various elections <laughs> that we've had <laughs> gone by <laughs> um but uh i i would say I, i'd love to leap into um a, 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 i don't know like an elite athlete and just to be able to experience like that um that level of like you know high jumping or pole vaulting or something i don't know it's just i think it would be really quite kind of cool <laughs> oh, okay i like that answer yeah Nice. Now, do you have a favorite character that uh, Kelsey has leaped into throughout the series? Oh, that she's leaped into. Yeah. Oh, well, in season two, she leaps into um, an elderly woman in a care home. And uh, Dixie Pig Pigton, she played that. And we didn't in this, we weren't able with the cutting and stuff, we weren't able to really feature Dixie a lot. But um, I think that was definitely one of my favorite leaps. I loved when in season one, she leapt into Aiden and there was, you know, there was a lot of fun that we had with that. Um, but yeah, picking your favorite one is like picking your child, you know, favorite child, <laughs> even though we all have one, a favorite child. <laughs> Can't really talk about it. I saw your, yeah, I saw your head bow when you thought I was going to ask who's your favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, now, it's, sorry, it's Chelsea Reist or Reist? Reist, yeah. Reist, okay. Now, I'm sure it's fun for her, like, kind of being able to play these different personalities each episode. Yeah. So yeah. what's that like for her as, like, an acting exercise, even? Yeah, um, she's always talked about how she's really enjoyed it because it's, um, she, what when we do a leap, she'll be at the monitor with me and she'll be watching what the other actor is doing. 
And so for her, it's really like she loves the physicality of it and just trying to get like nuances of, you know, what they're doing. Um, and I think that's been a really fun thing for her um, as an actor to, to really try to embody, you know, not only the character that's inside another character, but kind of watching what the other actor's doing to, to really sell it. And I think she did a really great job. Okay, so she studies their mannerisms and then kind of puts her own yeah. spin on it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Now, was it always the plan to like, like, ha like obviously when she leaps, like she then plays that person. Was that always the plan or would it just be confusing if that wasn't happening? Yeah, no, that was absolutely the, the plan. Um, it was kind of the one of the rules of the world that we set up that okay. whenever she had leapt into somebody, we would see Kelsey. Um, and then we'd only see the other character in a reflection or what have you. Um, we did break that a little bit in the first episode of season two, where we flipped between Alec Ponovic and Kelsey when, when it's like, yeah, the big opening where she starts with the gun to the head and confronts her dad. Um, okay. But we felt that uh, Alex is such a, you know, seasoned actor and an incredible talent. And we really wanted to showcase him and, and, and give him the opportunity to, to be playing his character, but Kelsey le leaping, like it's, it gets some confusing. <laughs> but if you watch uh, episode one, you'll know what I'm, I'm talking about. And just, yeah, and, and he nailed it. It was great. He had that kind of that little girl look to him, <laughs> you know. It's, it's funny, I actually ha had him on to chat about his movie Chained, and I had brought oh, up cool. I had brought up his, a film called Freaks that he did, where yeah. it was kind of similar in a way, where he, yeah. like a little girl jumped into his body and he had to play like an, a nine-year-old. And he I referenced know. Narco Leap. Oh, did he? Oh, that's I, th cool. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know that, that Freaks came out, um, that's Zach and Adam, their movie. Um, yeah, that came out in between season one and two. Okay. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my God. But it's very different. It's very different. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that's just like only one aspect one, of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that, you know, that was also when I saw that, I was like, oh, he can do this. Like, Alex can do this. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed kind of like similarities in the performance almost. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's nice that he had kind of training for that moment in a way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, what was it like casting him for the show and also casting Chelsea Reese? Sure. Well, um, it's funny because with Chelsea, I have known Chelsea for ooh, 12 or 13 years and I cast her. It was her first job out of university, out of uh, film school for her. And I cast her as a host on a travel show that I was doing. And we spent the summer with the crew driving in an RV through BC and Alberta oh, <laughs> and wow. doing this travel show. Yeah. And, and I've kept in contact with her over the years. And, and then of course I saw, you know, like her career is taking off and she was doing the 100. And um, I always, I, I always loved her as an, an actress. And um, so, you know, when we were developing this, like I said, like I, you know, it was like, I want to work with Chelsea. I want to, you know, have a female lead that kind of kicks butt. And so with Chelsea, it was like, I called her up and it'd been a while since I'd talked to her. And I, I was like, Hey, I've got this thing. And I, I don't know if I'm going to get money to, for it or what's going to happen, <laughs> but can I put you, can I, would you like to do the lead role? You know, and what actor doesn't, you know, love to be <laughs> offered that. Um, so, so that was how that came about. And with Alex, um, uh, yeah, same thing. I'd, I'd known him for many years and I've worked with him on a couple of things. Uh, and I called him up for coffee and it, but again, I hadn't talked to him in a while and I was, uh, I was really nervous and I met him for coffee on like commercial drive and it's like, so I've got this thing and I don't know if there's going to be any money, but I think I can get it together. And, uh, and he said, yeah, he's just like the most lovely human being. And, uh, and he said, yes, of course he says yes to everything I think, but <laughs> But yeah, and actually, and Nicole Oliver too, she was one that um, I just 
I had worked with her about 15 years ago on a reality TV show where she was the host and I was like the PA. It was like one of my first jobs in television. And um, she was always very, very kind and very generous. And I thought she would just be the perfect mom for Chelsea or Kelsey. Um, and, uh, and she was, and, you know, in season one, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't super happy with how her character had kind of come out. Like it, it was very one dimensional and, uh, working with John this season, I was like, okay, this is one thing that has to change. Like we have to give Nicole or Helen, uh, you know, more depth. We have to give her more backstory. Like she's not just a nagging mom. Like there's more to her. So, um, so I was thrilled. And of course, uh, Nicole was thrilled that she, you know, had this, uh, nefarious background and, you know, like <laughs> layers to her character, which was like a huge plot twist, which I, I won't ruin it for people if they haven't seen it, but yeah. Okay. Is that one of the fun things about the second season where you're able to like rework storylines, add new things? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I felt like, I, I knew that this would be it for the web series. Like I, I have no intention of doing a season three um, <laughs> unless somebody wants to dump a whole lack of money on my plate. But uh, uh, it's, it's just too, it's too difficult and it's too expensive to do, to do it the way I need to do it. So, yeah. Okay. So that was definitely my, one of my questions before this, like if it works best as a web series and, or, or if you wanted to do like a TV series. So that's yeah. interesting to hear that you're gonna be yeah. doing that pilot at least. Yeah, and I think, I mean, the story has, it's, it's got so much of an engine and so much of a, there's so much IP now that has been developed, right? Because of, of the web series that there's such a wealth of storylines that we can really expand on for a television sure. series. And uh, yeah. But I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I love it. It's like, it's one of the highlights having done the web series is definitely a highlight of one of my career so far. And, um, I'm, uh, it's like its own little entity and that's great. And now we get to expand and build off of that into something else. Now about the acting on the web series. Well, did anyone have to audition or were they, were they mostly like coffee chats? Yes, actually, yeah. So Madison, who played Aiden Webb, and uh, Austin Eckert, who played Miles Kirkland, they both auditioned. Okay. And um, yeah, they just they nailed it. And Madison, I can't. Remember, I was thinking about the story the other day, and I, I he, he, he always tells me the story. <laughs> he came in, and I think he auditioned for Miles' character first. If I'm getting this wrong. But we're like, oh no, you're you're not a Miles. Like as soon as we saw him, <laughs> we're like, no, you're not a Miles. Like here, go. Here's six pages. Go out into the room. Come back and audition for Aiden. I think that was the way it went. And so he, and you know, bless his heart, he he did it, and he nailed it. He nailed it. And and Austin as well. He he came in for Miles, and uh, he just absolutely nailed it. And there was a couple of tricky lines for um, Miles's character that I was like. Okay, anybody that like sells me on these lines, they get the part automatically because they were to me they were there was a few lines that were just a bit um I don't know, not believable. <laughs> but Austin and his theater training just nailed it. And uh and he just won a best Leo uh for his performance for Miles Kirkland. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So he won and also Nicole Oliver won a Leo for her performance as Helen. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Love it when the show gets recognized, right? That's, that's great. I do too. And I, I love seeing people succeed. And I love, you know, Lord knows we didn't do it for the money. So um, <laughs> I love seeing people, you know, getting accolades and getting uh, getting something out of it too themselves. Cool. Now, why was Madison not right for Miles? Just didn't have that super <laughs> spy thing going on? Yeah. Uh, he was just a little little young and a little too little too pretty. <laughs> yeah okay no, he, was, he was just the perfect um sarcastic fun college student friend like he just he was perfect for it yeah okay perfect for Aiden okay yeah all right awesome so like obviously with, with narco leap it has narcolepsy so what was it like depicting that and have you gotten any feedback from like the narcolepsy community 
No, we haven't actually. And um, but we, I did a lot of research into it, and I did a lot of research about the different types of narcolepsy. And um, you know, I I talked a lot to Chelsea about it at the beginning, and we talked about the leaps and what they were going to look like, and and we really worked on her physicality of you know what happens when. And we reviewed um, we reviewed a lot of footage. There was like there's a lot of YouTube videos of people with narcolepsy and the different types of narcolepsy. And um, one which <clears throat> is like uh, what is it called? It's like cat. Uh, oh, I can't, I'm not going to butcher the name of it. But it's like it starts with like just your muscles collapsing basically. Okay. And so we kind of riff we riffed off of that because we didn't want it to be like you know, her talking and then just, you know, like we didn't want it to be comical. Like that was the, that was the tricky thing. And so, um, yeah, so, but we haven't, we haven't heard from anybody that's like, you know, narcolepsy association or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Fair. Um, with the, the astral projection with, yeah. um, what was it like visually creating that astral world? Oh, the, the realm. Yeah. The realm. Um, sorry. Yeah, so a huge shout out to Kenji Rodriguez and so and Convoy uh, Visual Effects. Um, they did an incredible job and helped us out so much. Um, there, you know, <laughs> we were trying so desperately to meet the CSA deadline as well um, to get to get into the CSAs, which luckily, you know, we got nominated. So it, all our pain and suffering was was worth it. So. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but the poor guys, I was like, I need this astral realm. Um, so yeah, I just, I, in my mind, I had an idea of that it would be very nondescript. And I, I knew that we had budgetary concerns as well and, and parameters that we had to work within. And so along with Jeff Swicker, our DP, we discussed about kind of this void, creating this void space, but also having some texture on the ground. Um, and smoke and atmosphere. And then within that, there would we would see the other astral projectors kind of coming in. And the idea was that it was like an airport, this astral plane. So sure. it's like, you know, they're coming in and out. And sometimes they can stop and they can have conversations. And that is also something that uh, John and I talked about with using in the, the TV series is that this gives us another place where the trippers can meet and have sex or fight or they have conversations or whatever right um but uh one day we were actually it was really down to the wire and we were we had just started filming and we were filming out in richmond and this beautiful like thistle like uh like came drifting right past me and i like i just literally like reached out and grabbed it and i was like oh, that's the that's it and i like took a picture and they yeah. sent it to Kenji and I'm like, okay, this is what they need to look like. But like, you know, so we, we riffed off of that. <laughs> Literally <laughs> fell into my hand. <laughs> oh, that's awesome when it happens like that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd love to ask, do you have any fun stories from the set? <laughs> oh man, I, it was, I, oh gosh, yeah. Where do I start? I mean, <laughs> it was just such a love fest every day every day and especially to come back for season two we we had no idea if we, would, we were going to or we'd be able to and if, and it was like this big reunion and you know it's been such a long road with narcoly i mean for me it's been five years doing this <clears throat> from development all the way through season one two and you know and now now um and so but for the actors it's also been a long road and you know they've changed like from 2018 to 2020 it's you know been two years and um it's uh it was just a big love fest and a big reunion and always laughing always having a good time and it's something that i also as a director i'm very uh conscious of is that it comes from it comes from me and it, and the attitude and and everything and the tone on set comes from me and so um, you know, when we need to work hard, we work hard and we're serious and we make sure we do things safely and correctly, especially during COVID. Um, but I love a good fart joke. You know, <laughs> I love, I love jokes. I love people joking around. I mean, we're not curing cancer. 
we're not, you know, trying to win Nobel Peace Prizes here. We're just, we're making web series and we're making television. So, you know, let's have fun. Like we're spending four, 12, 14 hours a day together. So let's enjoy our time together. And so overall, um, that's the one thing I can say about being on set with all of these, like our cast and our crew as well. Awesome. Now, speaking about prizes, you had mentioned earlier there might be some prizes at the TL Web Fest. So yeah. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess because this will come out after the awards ceremony, right? Yeah, I'll probably put the, I'll try to get this up for early next week so people, okay. so it's still like at TL Web Fest. Yes. So, so it'll be good. Okay, cool. Um, okay, well, I'm very, very pleased that Scott Phelan, our production designer, won Best Production Design. Yeah. And uh, also our cast. Our cast won Best Ensemble Cast. Oh, that's um, so exciting. Yeah. And, uh, and then also I just participated in the Pitch Pit uh, yesterday. And with my new project, one of my new projects, Dr. F comedy series, and I won best overall pitch for that one. So that's the new project that's going to be coming out hopefully soon. Okay. I love the title for that. Dr. F I know. Yeah. <laughs> Did that sell them right, right from the get go? Uh, maybe, I don't know, but it's uh, I think, it, yeah, it was best overall pitch. Um, and it's starring Fletcher Donovan and Sarah Desjardins and uh, from impulse and she's done tons of stuff but yeah it's about uh, the great great grandson of victor frankenstein and he's a therapist to monsters so he um yeah and the monsters they they live kind of every day like they, they, you would see them you know everyday life they don't look like monsters they you know like jerry the werewolf just has like a lot of hair on his hands and you know <laughs> keeps ripping his shirts and stuff but the monsters deal with problems and issues that are just like you and me you know, uh, the tooth fairy has a compulsive shopping uh, problem. She keeps buying teeth. Um, the the Yeti doesn't like how he looks, so he wants to change his looks and plastic surgery. Um, Dracula has social anxiety because he doesn't want to be in groups of people because he keeps wanting to kill them and drink their blood. Um, you know, <laughs> like so things like this. And uh, so every episode has a therapy session with a monster. And then Victor's life and all the things that Victor's going through uh, he's very unlucky in love, and um, that's kind of bookended on on every episode. So it's a really fun comedy. Now, is there anything else you want to add? I don't think so. Uh, if people want to watch season one and two, they can go to Highball TV. If they want to see just season one, they can go to CBC or Gem. Uh, and we are going to, if they want to follow along on our socials, uh, it's pretty much just narco leap and you'll find us um <laughs> <laughs> there's no other narco leaps out there um but we're hopefully going to be announcing some other uh platforms very soon as to where you can watch the show okay. follow our socials that's the best thing to do is follow our twitter or instagram okay so basically whenever someone listens to this there's probably playing at a festival somewhere there's probably a festival somewhere you could catch an episode yeah <laughs> all right cool so Kate Green, director, creator of Martin Arco Leap, thank you for chatting with me on this one crazy show about the series. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye.